I am going to try to speak into the microphone. I'm told that it's a little hard to hear in the back, so I will, uh, I'll, I'll try to do that. Uh, a few announcements, I won't hit them all. Uh, the altar flowers, not the altar flowers here, but these, uh, these flowers here, uh, Lane and uh, Sally uh, Stevenson brought them. Uh, and Lane and Sally, this is such a gift that you, uh, you give to us, uh, and, and it, it's wonderful that you would take the hard work that you put into uh, your garden and share it with us. Uh, they have asked and, uh, and said that if you're uh, interested in taking uh, uh, some of these flowers after the end of the service, you're welcome to do so. Uh, there's some really pretty roses in here, the red ones, and then there's some uh, red and white ones as well. So feel free after the service to come on up here and, uh, and take those. Um, I won't read all the announcements. Uh, I will say this, though. The Easter lilies um, uh, to be ordered uh, need to be ordered uh, by this time next week. Uh, there's an envelope in your uh, bulletin that uh, you, can, you can fill out and, uh, and order uh, lilies. Make sure you designate where you want them, here or over in the well, so that they land in the, uh, in the right place. But as I said a couple of weeks ago, let's fill this place up with lilies. It smells so good on uh, Easter morning. Um, team meetings. The trustees will meet um, uh, tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Uh, next week, Finance Committee and the Church Council will meet. Finance Committee at 6 and the uh, Church Council at, uh, at 7. By the way, you may be aware of this, but I'll say it out loud anyhow. The Church Council is for all of us. Uh, there are people, uh, those of us that are, um, uh, represent uh, chairs of committees, uh, uh, appear there. But Every one of us can, can come and participate, and uh, the more voices we have, um, they're uh, expressing uh, their, their desire for the life of our church, the more likely it is we'll have a, um, uh, a robust uh, presence in the community. So uh, feel free to join that. Uh, life share. Okay, I want you all to do something. Raise your arm like this. Grab yourself right here, right here, and moderately pinch yourself. All right. If somebody said to you, that little pinch right there could save somebody's life, would you do it? Would you pinch yourself? I pinch myself all day. That's about the, uh, the, um, the extent of the pain to donate blood. And each time that happens, that little pinch, that little needle, and some, some of those people are really good, each time that happens, it's potentially saving somebody's life. I must have a 55-gallon drum of blood out there somewhere for all the years that I've been doing this. But it is so small a sacrifice in order to save somebody's life. So the blood center is over there. They're here, there till uh, 1230. Um, there's some suggestion that uh, we don't have enough um, uh, participants for them to bring the resources out here uh, and um, uh, and uh, involve us in the, in a blood drive. So let's uh, let's make sure that we get uh, get people out there. Just that little pinch. That's all it is. Okay. Um, Set up for, for the rummage sale begins today. If you have do donations, any time uh, between now and 7 o'clock on Thursday, uh, Mary Nell needs help. Mary Nell, you're grilling uh, ribeyes out there for, uh, for the volunteers today, right? <laughs> You're grilling ribeyes, right? Yeah. Grilling ribeyes for us, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, uh, James Hill, I've said it a couple of times. I love James. What a great guy he is. April 8th, um, on Sunday, he's, uh, he's going to um, deliver a message. He doesn't want me to use the word preach. It scares him. Uh, but the Saturday before that, uh, we're going we're gonna to have an open house for him. And, and he's been such a consistent part of our church life, keeps this place presentable and works hard doing so. Uh, let's, let's fill up both that uh, open house for him on Saturday and, uh, and uh, these uh, pews uh, for him on Sunday and hear what Joseph, or Joseph, what um, uh, James has to say to us. Uh, Joseph is our representative for the scholarship uh, applications. Uh, these are uh, for um, uh, for members, there's five hundred dollar uh, scholarships. Every penny helps when you're going to going to school. Uh, if you know somebody that uh, that uh, would like to um, uh, apply for a scholarship and you have questions, uh, talk to Joseph. Joseph's uh, got the lowdown on all of that. 
All right. Um, I'll leave the uh, the calendar to your reading and, and let you um, uh, come up to speed on, on what's going on this next week. If you're a visitor, thank you so much for joining us. We'd love to have you stay. Uh, this is a great congregation. And uh, if you've got any questions, our pastor is available. And actually, anybody sitting in this pew in these pews today um, uh, can help you with any questions that you might have. So feel free to speak to somebody and uh, if you've got questions, uh, uh, either catch uh, Brother Mark this morning or make a phone call, and, um, and he'll be glad to spend some time with you. So for right now, let's rise for the uh, uh, introit and for our call to worship. Trust in God's unfailing love. I will praise you forever, God, for what you have done. I will trust in your good name. In the presence of your faithful people. Let's remain standing for our first hymn, Lift High the Cross, 159 in your hymnal or on the uh, screen behind me. Oh 
Let's join together to affirm our faith according to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, and the third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and He sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Kiddos, come on forward. Uh, Miss Michelle has got a, uh, some time for you. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so today, to, yesterday was a big day. What was yesterday? Yeah, did y'all all, all wear green? Yeah, no. You did? No? You didn't? Yeah, okay, so a lot of times on St. Patrick's Day we see these shamrocks, right? I, I found full. I found uh, um, yeah, full flowers. Yeah, okay. So, but usually when you see a shamrock, they have three leaves like this. Okay, now St. Patrick's Day is not um, a holiday that is talked about in the Bible, and St. Patrick is not in the Bible either. But St. Patrick is a man that told a lot of people about Jesus, okay? And he loved Jesus, and his whole job was to spread the word of Christ everywhere. So he talked about the shamrock as a way to tell about Jesus. Okay, the shamrock has, as I said, how many leaves? Okay, so if it only had two leaves, it wouldn't look right, would it? It would look funny. Yeah. So, anyway, St. Patrick said that the shamrock was kind of like God. Okay, God is one big God, but he has three different parts. Okay? The three different parts of God are the Father, which is like one leaf, the Son, which is like another leaf, and the Holy Spirit. And those whole those three parts make up one. Well, four leaf clovers don't count. They're just kind of special, okay? But most of the clovers have three. Yeah, they give you good luck. Anyway, so that he called those three parts the Trinity. Trinity means three. So the Father is God the Father that created the earth, that when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we say our Father who art in heaven. The Son, Jesus, is Jesus that was born in a stable and died on the cross for our sins. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit that Jesus said would be with us always after he died on the cross and went up to heaven. So isn't that cool that the Shamrock reminds us of God? So every time y'all see one of these, you can think of the... The three parts. Y'all say with me, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, make up a big God. That's right. Y'all got it. Okay, let's say a prayer. Y'all pray with me, okay? Dear God, thank you for St. Patrick's Day. And thank you for St. Patrick. You taught us about you and helped us to remember the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, y'all can come with me to Children's Church. Amen. Okay, this is our our time for uh, joys and concerns, where we share together the um, vicissitudes of life. So, um, uh, are there any concerns we need to uh, bring forward today? Thank you. Genlo, we are so sorry to have lost Roy. Our sorrow can't even begin to measure what your family's feeling right now. If there's anything we can do for you, individually or as a, con a congregation, please, please, please let us know. We will stand in Jesus' spot and be Him for you and your family. All right, any other concerns? Yeah. Well, I remember Betty Goodwin, she was having some difficulties yesterday, and um, John is not with us today, and I feel sure that's why. So let's remember Betty Goodwin. Remember who? Betty Goodwin. Okay, all right. <laughs> Okay. How about joys? What joys do we have? Yes. 51 years today. 51, man. Good for you. Yeah. Jenny kind of 38 years on Wednesday. Say it one more time. 38 years on Wednesday. 38. Yeah. Pat, go ahead. Wow. A lot of people got married in uh, in March. Others? Yeah. Uh, I'm celebrating 84 years on earth. Thank God. <laughs> 84. <laughs> Others? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, birthday. All right. Good deal. All right. Others? Okay, let's take a few moments and get ourselves centered and uh, I'll pray on our behalf. <laughs> uh, Father, life goes on. It goes on as you've designed it. We have concerns, we have joys, we have sorrows, we have blessings. For all those that are feeling weak in heart, are experiencing sorrow, having difficulties, those that are not with us that wish they were, those that are not with us that we wish they were, those with illness, those with losses you're there you're with you're with them and father so many times your presence is expressed in those times as our presence sensitize each one of us each one of us to follow your spirit that little voice that sometimes says speak to that person hug that person touch them hold their hand send them a note Make the phone call so that truly, Father, we can be your presence in those hard times that others are having. And for the joys, the, the marriages that last, the birthdays that we have, the wonderful days we have where sometimes we forget you 
<clears throat> Keep us ever mindful that even in those good times when we don't think we need you, or we may be neglecting you, that you're there, you're with us, your presence is felt, and help us not only to feel joyful, but also gracious to you. So that as life goes on, as you've designed it, we can all support each other when needed, celebrate with each other when we have the opportunity, and express to the world what it is to be in faith with you. So much so that we're compelling and draw others to you through us. Father, we give ourselves to you in that regard and ask that you poke us when we need to be poked. Father, I pray that all of this in the name of your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, our scripture lesson is coming from the book of Deuteronomy. Actually, uh, the context of this is uh, Israel is east of the Jordan. They are ready to pass in. Uh, the uh, uh, Moses is told that he is he's going to die, and God has asked him to present himself and Joshua in the tabernacle. And Joshua takes over the leadership of of, uh, of uh, the Israelis as they, or excuse me, the uh, Jews as they go into um, uh, Jerusalem. Excuse me, golly, I've got this wrong. Into the Promised Land. Um, it's interesting. Right in the middle of all of that. God is speaking to Moses and Joshua and he tells them that the people will be disobedient. The God that's about to take them into the promised land, he, he predicts they will be disobedient. Isn't that a message for us? That uh, sometimes when we get led into the promised land that we need to remember not to be dis disobedient. So we end up with Moses um, preparing... Uh, Joshua and uh, he uh, he uh, sings a song and it's Deuteronomy uh, the uh, 31st chapter uh, ver uh, 30th verse running into uh, um, chapter 32 <clears throat> so Moses recited this entire song publicly to the assembly of Israel listen O heaven and I will speak hear O earth the words that I say let my teaching fall on you like rain let my speech settle like dew let my words fall like the rain on tender grass like gentle showers on young plants I will pro proclaim the name of the Lord how gracious is our God okay if the ushers will come forward give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine, O Lord, a trust, O God, from thee. Father, help us to be generous, not just with our offering that's so important to the life of our church, but with our other resources, time, energy, sensitivity, all the things that we are, all the things that are human that show that we love you and love our neighbor. Help us to offer all of that. I pray that this in Christ's name. Amen.
continue our worship with uh, hymn number 393, Spirit of the Living God. <coughs> your Bibles to Joshua chapter 1. We'll be reading from verses 1 through 3. Joshua 1, 1 through 3. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River and into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. The Word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts all of our souls and all of our minds, may they be truly and utterly faithful to your word, O Lord our God, our rock and our redeemer. And we pray that you would guide and direct us today to remember that whatever we are facing, that you are always faithful. Help us to live as those who know you personally. And may we live our lives out of that relationship. To the glory of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. was the most difficult change that you've ever had in your life? A transition that was so difficult to get through or that you were worried about facing? Now, what, what was a time in your life where there was a change and you were struggling to go through it or worried about it? As, as you can imagine for the Israelites, they were about to go through one of the most difficult changes that they had ever experienced uh, in, in their lifetime. For all of these people, for all of the Israelites, they had only known Moses as their leader. They had only known Moses as the one who stood before God and spoke to God and who, who God spoke to. And so now was coming a time when there was going to be a huge transition, a huge change, a huge time when things were going to just be totally different than they ever thought or imagined. 
if you remember, the, the Israelites were about to go into the promised land and they were worried about the people that were there and, and so they wouldn't enter. Uh, and so God said, well, you're going to travel in the wilderness for 40 years until this generation dies. And after all that generation had died, then they had, uh, the, this was the time where they're about to enter into the promised land. And of course, Moses was told he couldn't go into the promised land either uh, after he had disobeyed what God had told him to do. And so now is a time when Moses, their leader, is about to say farewell. And then their new leader, Joshua, is about to say hello. Maybe that change in your life was maybe you were going from one teacher to another teacher, a, a different grade in class. Maybe you graduated from high school and going into college. Or, or maybe it was that first job that you had. Or, or maybe it was the marriage or, or that first child or that 50th child that you had. Whatever it was, what was that change that was difficult for you to go through? Uh, well, this morning, let's look at uh, both what Moses has to say and what Joshua has to do uh, to see how we can kind of walk through change and transition uh, when, when we're going through. So here is Moses. He's, he's giving his farewell to the people. Uh, he, Deuteronomy is his last sermon. Uh, and here in chapter 31, he's getting to the final and he sings uh, to, to all the people a song. And in this song, he, he has a, a few things and all of them have to do with remembering. Uh, and, and they're all remembering uh, the story that they had had throughout uh, the transition and through the wilderness from Egypt until today. Uh, and so Moses tells the people to remember and, and he's reminiscing about all of those experiences that he had through this song. And uh, as you can imagine, that there were some good times that Moses had uh, when leading the people of Israel, but there was also a lot of difficult times when he was leading the people of Israel, so much so that he lost his temper and then wasn't able to get into the promised land. And, and over and over the people complained and, and grumbled and strived, but through it all, God uh, was there. And so this is what uh, Moses wants to remind the Israelites uh, as they're about to go into the promised land. The first thing that God reminded, uh, that Moses reminded the people uh, of Israel is of the covenant uh, that they had. That they are a covenant people. That God chose them not because they were the biggest or the best or the prettiest, but God chose them because He loved them. Uh, and this covenant is a covenant uh, where in that relationship, to live in that relationship is to live into a different life. It's to live into a life of holiness, a life that is different from the world around them. Uh, and, and that covenant, is, uh, it, it shapes who they are supposed to be. Each month we take communion uh, and we rem are reminded of that same covenant that God uh, calls us into. It's a reminder that through Jesus Christ we are a part of that covenant and we are to live our life differently from those around us. And we are to live a life of holiness because Jesus Christ sacrificed His life for us. Now we are to be a living sacrifice for all those that we come in contact with. And we're reminded of that through the blood and the bread and the bread making of that, of, of our commitment to live out that covenant relationship uh, with God. Uh, the second thing that Moses reminded the people about is the dangers that they're about to face as they go in to the promised land. Well, you can remember that when they were going to go in the promised land the first time, they were all worried about how tall the people were. They were giants there, remember? And they have such well-fortified cities. And so Moses isn't, he's not warning them of the dangers of the people. He's not warning the people about the political structure. He's not warning the people there uh, uh, that it's going to be difficult to, to go in and, and, and to fight the new people. What Moses tells them is going to be dangerous. The most dangerous point to them is that they might start following the gods of the countries that they go into. That the biggest danger for them of all is not the political or the economic or, or whatever else, the biggest danger, the biggest danger that they're going to face is not living out the true covenant that God makes with them. That they are going to give in to the foreign gods and start worshiping the foreign gods in the foreign ways and they're going to live 
their life the same as those around them. And the biggest difference uh, for them is, is not political, but it's religious. Is that they are to live differently from the world around them. And we're reminded the same way uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ is that we are to live differently than the world around us. We are to be a light, a city on a hill for all the world to see about how much God loves and cares for every single person out there. We are to be that light shining in the darkness. And we're to live that out. The third thing that, God, that Moses uh, tells the people about God is God's faithfulness. He reminds them that, you know what? God has always been faithful to you even when you were unfaithful to God. Even when you didn't want to go into the promised land, God was still faithful. Even when you uh, started worshiping other gods, God was still faithful to you. Through it all. You remember that when God delivered you from Egypt, God was faithful to get you through the Red Sea uh, on dry land. And, and how God protected you from Pharaoh's army as they were coming after you and the, the, the Red Sea covered them up. And, and then you remember that when you were hungry, that, that God gave you food. And when you were thirsty, God gave you water. And when you wanted meat, God gave you quail. And you remember all these times that God was faithful to you. Uh, and God will always be faithful is what Moses reminds the people right before he goes and dies. God's faithfulness is always there. God is so faithful that you know what? Your sandals that you've been wearing for 40 years, there's not even a hole in those sandals. How many of y'all would like to have sandals that last 40 years? Uh, uh, they, they last what? About six months uh, now with the way they get it. But... but that's how faithful God was. That even your sandals that you wore on your feet lasted as all the time that you went into the wilderness. And then the big change comes. Here, uh, God comes to Joshua and He tells Joshua, Joshua, Moses is dead. Now it's time for you to go and lead the people. And the first thing that He tells Joshua is you need to march. And so, so Joshua... Uh, he, he leads the people and He tells them they are to proceed as God's people. Just as they have been as God's people uh, in the past, they are to continue to proceed as God's people. And they come to the Jordan River. They come to the Jordan River and, and they, they come and the Jordan River stops so that they are able to walk across on dry land just as a reminder of how they had gone through the Red Sea all those years before. Uh, as a sign that God is still with them. As, as a sign that God will not forsake them. As a sign that Joshua is their new leader. That they're, they're able to cross into the promised land finally. Uh, and then as they go into the promised land, uh, there's this big huge obstacle right there, isn't it? The city of Jericho. Walled off city, a huge city with all these people. How in the world are these people of God going to be able to come into this city? Well, God tells Joshua what to do. And they walk around the, the, the city seven times. Uh, they tells them to be quiet and to walk around seven times in seven days. And then on the seventh day, to blow the trumpets and shout as loud as they, they can. And when they do that, the walls come crumbling down as, as, a, as a, a symbol that God is with them, that he can, they, they can do anything. And then, by one by one, they start to go and they take all of the different cities, no matter how big they are, no matter how, how troublesome they may look, God is with them and so they're able to take these cities until one of their people, Achan, does what God told them not to do. Uh, Achan, Achan... Uh, he said, well, you know what, this, this gold, this treasure, this, uh, is it really, anybody going to notice if I really take just a little bit of it? And so he takes that and, and they're about to go and they're about to conquer this little old nothing of a city called Ai. Uh, and, and, and it means rubble. Uh, if, if that kind of... It, it's just a little old nothing little town that, that means nothing, that this going to be a breeze to go through that. Uh, probably what Virginia thought the other night as they were playing that basketball game. Uh, but they, they, uh, they come and they go to AI and what happens? They have to retreat. 
Over and over again, the people of Ai push the Israelite people back. <clears throat> Why? Because they didn't live out that life of holiness. And then all the consequences that come through that. You remember a couple of weeks ago I said fail is first attempt in learning. Well, the Israelites, they failed forward. They learned from that mistake. And they learned the importance of living their life for God and following God in all of their ways. So you see, as, as, as Moses told the people and as Joshua led the people, they learned that it's not... Uh, about econ economy or, or politics or anything else. What it's really about, it's the heart of the matter is their relationship with God and keeping that relationship most important. God's way is the heart of the matter. God's way is the way that we ought to live our life. God's way is the way that's going to help us to overcome any change or any circumstance that the world's going to throw at us. Uh, God's going to help us to cross those Jordans of life. God's going to help us when we're dealing with Jerichos. God's going to help us in life through it all. And yes, there's going to be times when we fail and we turn away from God. But God will remain faithful and true and always be with us. So when we're going through transitions in life or change or just going through life, we are to remember whose we are. We're to remember who we serve. And we're to remember that we, who we're supposed to love through it all. Will we live out the life that God is calling us to live? Will we live out that life that God calls us to, to be different from the world around us? Society tells us to live one way, but God says we are to be a light to that world. How are we living out the calling that God calls us to live? How are we being faithful to God's covenant and God's relationship and love for us? How are we loving others in the full way and in all of our heart? How are we loving the world, everybody in the world? And how are we failing in following that commitment? This Lenten season, I pray that you, that you have started to look inwardly at the ways that you aren't living up to that covenant. At those ways that you aren't following God's ways. In those ways that you are, are, are giving in to the ways of society. And push those ways out and make God your all in all. Who will you serve today and every day? May it be the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. Let us pray. Loving God, we confess that we don't always love you with our whole heart. We fail to be an obedient church. We have broken your way. We have not done Your will. But we thank You through the blood of Your Son, Jesus Christ. All of those sins are forgiven. We thank You that we are in relationship with You through Him. And we ask that You help us. Help us to live our life more faithfully. And may we follow You day in and day out in all our ways. May they be pleasing to You. And may we know you more richly, more fully. And may our lives be an example for all the world to see of the love you have for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. This morning we get to do something a little special. Uh, Joseph Orban has done some really amazing work uh, to be able to get this award. So Joseph, if you will come down uh, this morning, we're gonna, he is going to receive um, his certificate as a certified lay servant uh, this morning.
Uh, and uh, he has responded to his call to serve by becoming a local church servant and a certified lay servant. Uh, a lay servant is a member of a local church who is ready and desirous to serve the church, who is well informed on the scriptures and on the doctrine, heritage, organization, and the life of the United Methodist Church, and who has received specific training to develop skills in witnessing to the Christian faith through spoken communication, church, and community leadership, and caregiving ministries. Uh, so this morning I present Joseph uh, to you as a member of our congregation and as a uh, certified lay servant. Uh, so now I'm going to ask you some of these questions that uh, you uh, have uh, learned to do. Uh, brothers and sisters, do you now in the presence of these persons renew your membership vow to be loyal to the United Methodist Church, to faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Uh, do you believe you have been called by the Holy Spirit to use your skills to lead in your church and community, to expand your caring ministries and to witness to the Christian faith in worship and other settings? Uh, do you intend to live a life in keeping with the teaches and an example of Jesus Christ? Do you believe the scriptures of the Old and New Testament? Are you willing to serve your congregation in any way called upon you by your pastor or charge conference? Y'all heard that, didn't you? Uh, are you willing to take the initiative in program support and give leadership to the total work of your local congregation? Are you willing to lead meetings for prayer, study, and discussion to assist in the conduct of worship and to care for others? Are you willing to continue your study, improve your skills, and grow in wisdom and ability? Uh, Have you faithfully ascribed to the requirements for lay servant ministries as set forth in the book of discipline? Yes, sir. All right, and now I present to you uh, your lay serv servant. Uh, we'll get a picture for the man. Uh, or a thousand uh, with that. Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, Joseph if you'll kneel there uh, at the altar. I'm going to say a little prayer over you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose word is truth, in keeping of which is eternal life, we thank you for Joseph, whom this day we set aside in your name as local church certified lay servant. Prepare him in body, mind, and spirit for his task and continue him in your grace that he may increase and bless your church through his labors, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Joseph. Here's your certificate. Thank you. And if y'all would like to learn a little bit more about what that means, uh, he would be glad to uh, teach you because he just said that. He'll show you how you can become a uh, lay servant uh, as well. You may go back to your seat. During our closing hymn, we open the altar for you as a time of prayer. If you'd like me to pray with you, come tell me. Otherwise, I'll let you pray at the altar by yourself. Maybe you've been visiting this church for a while and you'd like to become part of this church family. There's a card in your pew rack that you can fill out. Bring that down with you during the song and become part of this church family. If you have questions about joining the church, I'd love to meet with you during the week. Uh, give me a call and we'll sit down and talk about what that means to become a member of the body of Christ. However God's inviting you to respond, we pray that you will. But let's all stand together as we sing our last hymn.
So great having you worship with us this morning as part of our church family. If you're visiting with us this morning, I'm Pastor Mark. I uh, hope that you have been touched by God and He's spoken to your heart. Uh, there's something that you can do for us if you uh, uh, are visiting with us. You can text uh, the number. Do you have that slide? No. No. It's in your bulletin. There's a place in your bulletin that will tell you that you can text hello uh, to that number if you're visiting with us and it will help us to connect with you uh, a little bit more. But let us go now into the world knowing God's faithfulness, knowing that we are God's and that we are not alone, and knowing that wherever we go, God's love goes with us and that we are to share it with all we come in contact with. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ we go. Amen. Amen. Amen.